big to to endele yes. so you decide after 46 uh, uh, yeah. hapa nimehita ceiling <laughs> wacha nione wazungu tu <laughs> so, so now uh, i've gotten into advertising i'm still doing videos mm. a lot at this time have you done the safari command yes uh, no after after a little bit after okay okay cool oh before seto Before Seto you're done. Yeah, I've, I've done it. Okay, yeah. wait. Seto Bungoja, let's talk about the Safaricom ad. What what like <laughs> hold on, that is insane. Safaricom do not First of all, let me say agencies yeah. only used to give ads to people who looked white. Yes. Way back. Yes. Way back. Yes, ish, yeah. And and as not, not even who looked like to be honest, yeah. the kind of a lot of the ads were in the beginning were yeah. done by they're not being done by locals. Yes. So to hear that the largest company in Eastern and Central Africa is giving you part of an ad to do that's huge yeah we've got and to understand those gains it's these are the kind of things i want gen z to know yes and it changed so by the time and it's true and a lot of uh, the biggest ads are being done by guys you get guys from sa coming down mm. you get guys uh, even if it's a production company guys are coming out and also because the expertise these are guys who have been doing yes. this for the last like 20 30 years exactly. so it also makes sense mm. so as much as maybe you might cry for it i want it <laughs> like, maybe they, they, they yeah they want this particular one that you want this for marketing the whole it's like something to market i think the whole company and they're like let's this guy do it but what used to happen even when these guys came you get maybe the director or the dp is the guy who was coming in mm. most of the logistic guys the guys down on the underground the these are kenyans nice yeah uh, and now because now i think we are fast learners so you get to learn very quickly You're like okay okay so this is the ideology you learn so it get you get better even now when you're doing our own stuff mm. so you know it also helped because there's some there's some knowledge that we got from exactly yes. the same thing that happened when you germany yes germany the the, the one day films from germany yeah. allowed you now to do 46 46 and yeah. i had now knowledge mm. so all this time you're doing this adverts and you're pitching for adverts and you're getting some adverts some you're not getting you move on <laughs> mm. uh, i realized that most of our post production that you're taking our post production to either out especially for color grading mm. for coloring and there was a very big difference like post to be done down in South Africa. Mm. Uh you you Explain you take it somebody what post production is. So post production is just a way when you're doing a movie, a film, anything shooting related, there's something called pre-production. So pre pre-production before production, that's mm-hmm. where you prepare your scripts, mm. your crew, your talent and everything. That's all you have for the pre-production. So mm. we call that phase the pre-production phase where you do the contracting we do scouting scouting and everything just planning mm. production is the actual shooting now you're on set you're so come shooting. on say say yes. this is a, this is this is production production yes so we're shoot. shooting production we're actually shooting camera light on mm. then we do post production now we have the footage uh we take it to the edit edit room whichever thing that you're editing even if you're editing with an antivirus yes <laughs> <laughs> you get the footage you edit and all that so this is part of a post production mm-hmm. so post production might include and not limited to editing mm-hmm. you do now you making mi- making it flow yeah making the edit mm-hmm. you do the music where now you can either score a music you can mm-hmm. have a whole orchestra playing or you can use existing music so like lucas was the one who did the score for footy sticks yes msio ka also does a lot of scoring for adverts yes. so you do there's scoring there's also editing mhm so and there's mixing mhm so you can score you create a score music and all that you score it then there's the editing where you can actually put when i'm editing i can edit sound effects yeah like mm-hmm. i'm walking here i can create mm-hmm. extra steps i can if it's this room and Kama maybe kama sai sound effects umeshuta <laughs> Nile so I think we're silent we're like you're loud and loud <laughs> so that did, that's editing yeah you did actually it's me who put yes a sound it, effect so you can arrange them edit mm-hmm. and i say maybe in this room uh, maybe there are people so now when you're shooting for example it's a house party mm. if it's this scene i'd only want the person who's conversating to be the ones who are talking yep so the other guys are pretending to be <laughs> Exactly. So that's what we shoot is like they pretend but on the when he's editing he can actually put like background mm. ambient music or people shouting 
and maybe balance them with the guy who was talking mm. so that's editing then now mixing in fact let me explain that again yeah. so like right now say something and then i'll put people shouting yeah 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 okay no ladies and gentlemen oh, l- introduce it yeah. anosolik ladies and gentlemen introducing on stage anosolik the one and only uh everybody cheer up clap for this guy now that's editing aha uh-huh, i get it so that's editing you plan them then when you go to mixing now you mix the levels mm-hmm. so different outputs have different levels mm-hmm. that they're using uh, and there's something called a loudness meter that you use to determine how loud your output where is the loudness meter is it it's it's an effect it's 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 on the so loudness meter it's 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 it's, it's in some of the music uh, okay. softwares okay. might be wrong or right and you can use it to 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 see the average uh, level of sound of the whole film aha uh-huh, yes i get so, it so like you see like multi choice the, the, it's called al l u f s so which is a standard where they want all their sounds to be at which is like minus 23 Wow, wow, DB. wow. Okay, let's talk about this because this one <laughs> here is it's, where if it doesn't matter how well you shoot, your yes. film would be on 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 DSTV yes. or on Netflix yes. if you don't hit their criteria yes. of audio. Yes. So you can't just mix the way at the mean at the fikiri na sound. In a sound poor. It mix mix yangu. So they they <laughs> mix yangu ko poor. <laughs> it's why working Abel Mutua it was sent back. Okay, na Abel Mutua when yeah. I did, when I interviewed him. Yeah. Multitude sent them back their movie and they're like yeah. hey this is not to our quality yeah because you know why it's very important mm-hmm. because now when i'm binge watching when i'm binge watching like for example something like multitude mm. or netflix where there's a lot of content ah, yeah, yeah, so yeah, if yeah, you yeah. mix yours it might be correct actually the level might be perfect then the next person they'll mix it to their perfect so your your average Ooh, let's say the, the, average, volume. Yeah, the average level for you maybe might be minus six decibels This next person because maybe where he was mixing he, lo- he loves Kelele yeah. it was minus 2. Mm. So what will happen if you're doing this show then you go to the next show you'll be like killer time eh, reducing the volume eh, adding the volume you're like this I'm not listening but something to note when you're watching Netflix if you wake up and put volume 10 do you realize you you, you never, never play change. yes like and you're watching is that until you've said it now yes and you're binge watching different shows why not meant to be like a show like <laughs> why because they they decided let's have a standard and it's they now there are different places based on the different uh regions like mm. europe uh-huh. the way we use pal and tsc because mm. of the frame rate yes. and the refresh rate so they came up with a standard so for every single people or station they'll give you their standard and you all you always ask like what what are your specification they'll tell you our audio audio like citizen they'll say it they want it at minus six mm. uh an international st- standard which is the is it the rbu or something lufs they'll tell you maybe minus 23 some will tell you minus 17 so that because they know with their system mm. when you enter hbo you don't need to adjust the volume i get it everything even the adverts you just feel is the same but now anytime you watch a station and you're like it a mad what you're reducing your ad i cannot hear they don't have a standard wow 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 so wow. you That's need to it. have a standard now post production just 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 simple things mm. and you have to ask there are different formats that you are supposed to send your video in mm. people maybe by now people know about mp4 and mov yes yes <laughs> to me mp4 people know mp3 mm. because of the cd mm. so there are different formats that different regions need you get some they need maybe an mp4 the some who need an mov and some of this thing yeah. so for example on netflix and we are going to come back to yeah. color grading because that's how we've gone down this rabbit hole don't worry <laughs> city has taught me to have a good memory yeah so um something like netflix there's a certain quality you need to shoot at because if you don't capture that quality yeah. for example if you capture at 480p yeah and netflix standard is 4K. Yeah. You can't turn 480p into 4K. Okay, you can, but you got to yeah, it be, uh, be stretching it. Mm. So every station has a the choice. So no, for Netflix, they say they want 4K for their originals. So originals are the ones which them themselves they are mm-hmm. handling this. You might go and sell an idea and they take it as an original. So yes. they'll pump in money. Yeah, That's yeah, the idea. Yes. So for those on the very specific, 4K. It, it should be 4K minimum. Mm. And it's future proof. 
because now uh, just the other day and, and people say 4k our internet is not <laughs> even 4k but some three five five four years we're doing 360p exactly. on youtube <laughs> exactly <laughs> now like, CTA, i do ct in 4k yes mm. because now we are even in the next like before right now our stations our local station mm -hmm. i don't think they're even 720p they're like five something or four yeah, i don't know for what, what, what are they doing so for eight pixels mm -hmm. <laughs> how they would say this is just different before you get to hd you get mm. the 360 38 or whatever 144 to 40 <laughs> and at that time it was it was loading <laughs> you put 360 <it's laughs> 480 480 what, guys even a phone guys will use hd now yes so uh we 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 are we are still not even to 720 then mm -hmm. after 720 we get to hd mm -hmm. after hd we get to 2k which is like dci that's what that's the quality we watch our movies at imax what the dcps are usually at 2k i didn't know 2048 that. 2048 times 1080p uh. that's dc but now it's, it's a different system yeah, yeah but you're watching our movies at 2k what our dcps our dcis then after that we get to ultra hd uh, ultra hd which is like 3k there then we get to 4k then we jump now to 6k 8k okay, yeah, we're yeah, already yeah, having yeah. cameras which are shooting at 12k 12k our, yes our film cameras that we use that's why people people are asking me okay we're in the digital age but why when we get movies which are done in film kitambo like 1970s they are so clear mm -hmm. because film they're re-edited not even that film film was capturing a lot of details uh -huh. a lot of it was not processed it was straight to that i film. get it yes so it was getting at the highest i think it's even close to like 24k what mm, you're getting mm. because it's there's no processing there's no sensor I converting image pop, direct pop. so the quality is still even now when you watch the tcm movies the quality is usually mm. still up to par because of we are always trying to replicate what film was doing are, are people shooting in film so for example yes. things like uh, Black Panther are they shooting in film yes yes they're shooting in film then you convert it into digital so you get high quality mm. but we're almost in a place where we're almost up, up to par okay with what film used to uh, do but we're, still we're, we're getting the machine the gear yeah the gear we're saying we're getting the quality there but the the look of film is still not able to replicate it so okay. when you're doing color grading I can replicate a, a look to 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 make it look like film Mm. but you're still not yet there so that's why anything you did with film even your movies that you did with film in 1980 right now they're still very clear i get it because you can still create a washer in your share picture mm -hmm. town you can upscale it to like 4k and still okay. very good quality so now these are all past of parts of post-production uh music scoring and i don't want to enter music i'm not a yeah. music guy, but yeah. i understand everything mm. that happens in music and there's editing there's the music then there's the graphics which might take even the visual effects for any graphics words popping and everything and explosions mm -hmm. part of graphics and vfx then there's a very important part which color grading mm. color grading it's it's connected with finishing we call it color grading and finishing mm. so when i was working on a lot of projects i realized most of our projects we're taking it for color grading down to sa dubai I don't know where China. All this, all this, especially the big ads. Yes, big ads. Mm. But it was coming back, and it it was whoa! It looks so nice. Mm -hmm. It was an expertise. So from the initial stages, I was even for a movie supermodel, like the final finishing and grading was done in Berlin, mm -hmm. Berlin, Germany, mm. uh, in the Ari offices. That's super high end. So for me, from the, that time, I was always very interested in uh, color grading because. As a DOP, your color grading is an extension of what you do. Mm -hmm. Because that's where I can hide my mistakes. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> that's why I'm able to create a nice look. So they're always connected. That's why in a movie, when you're doing the color grading, the director, most of the time, is not the one who's there. Mm -hmm. It's actually the DOP who's sitting down with the color, colorist to come up with a look, to create the look grading. I get it. Sometimes you get the director. Mm -hmm. When you're doing the TV commercial, it is the director deciding everything mm. in the post production house but for movies for the colors uh, that's actually the work of the dop i get it and, they, and nowadays you get most big dops are also very good colorists they're doing color grading not necessarily to do it for their film but to have that understanding 
mm. that they create looks that they can shoot with and make it easier for when it's being done post. Okay. So I realized And is it a different software? Okay, no, you, know, you yes. realized? Uh yeah, it's a different software that you use for color grading. It's totally different. Okay, so, so I realized it's not it's not what us guys are doing on Adobe Premiere. No. Uko kushikana kushikana. No, no, no. <laughs> Yetu ni kushi, ya ni kushikilia. <laughs> <laughs> now there are specific softwares which are de- dedicated to color grading. Like such such as uh, one is called DaVinci, mm-hmm. the biggest one, the DaVinci Resolve. It yeah. is base light. Okay. So those are the big ones. So you take your MP4 and you put it onto that. So you take uh, you take your, oh, your videos, project. you're edited uh-huh. and you now move it to that software and now you go frame by frame and you paint it and you paint your frame like you go touch the background where there's a little bit of highlight, you touch it, you reduce it make it dark make it contrasty have a look if want the shadows to look green yeah. so i play around so the software which are used for color grading uh, are very particular because i'm able the i'm able to play around with different frequencies of the image mm. if it's the shadows the mid tones and the highlights just a question can i yeah. put a full mp4 yeah. what i normally upload onto youtube yeah. can i rather than put it onto youtube can i take that mp4 and i throw it to da vinci yes you can and then uh, there i start playing with it yes youtube mimi <laughs> apple <laughs> so there's <laughs> a way there's a way we shoot flat uh. when your camera is shoot the the log profile yes which it's less contrasty mm. so that when you get there you're able now to add contrast you can play around just and it's very easy so but there's an art to it mm. So I immediately got uh, into learning about So were you using DaVinci before you had gone? No, I wasn't using DaVinci. You you are Adobe Ukimaliza Adobe. Adobe <laughs> setting kidogo. Uh, I was actually using uh the, there's a very nice uh plugin called Lumetri. That's what you're using for color on Adobe. Uh, it still does the work. Yes. A lot of people do the grading there. It works. Is called? Uh, Lumetri it's, it's part oh, yeah, of yeah, it's yeah, part yeah, of yeah, Adobe. It, yeah. Guys use it and it works. Yeah, mm. but it's just that this other software has more options. Okay. And also because I said we do finishing. So finishing is the final export. Mm. Like I want it to go to the cinema. I have to export it something called a DCP. Yes. Which are images. I mm. want it maybe these guys want it like MOV I'll export MOV. Mm. They want it MP4. So it's a good software because it has all those formats. Okay. That you can ever wish for in the whole world. Mm. Even if you're going for YouTube, it has uh YouTube settings which, which will maximize the size of your for example let me just give an example if a music video I'm exporting on Adobe Premiere which is a software for editing to take it to YouTube a 4 minutes video um, I export it just nice settings it will be like almost like export it at what size yeah it will be like almost like 700 MB for uh what for YouTube like for, for example uh, YouTube yeah but what size M- M- 4K MP4 Um, even it can be 4K okay. even 4K okay. it's going to be like around 700 MB mm, for mm, example 4 mm. minutes if i take it to davinci they optimize the 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 bandwidth the the codecs for for exporting the same file mm. optimized for youtube it can be like 150 MB wow so it it optimizes it, it. yeah it optimizes the mm. the workflow mm. so i was like from initially i got youtube of course started learning about this stuff started working on it i was like it's a nice thing but i was always like there's a juice mm. there's a hidden juice like a cartel <laughs> i could <laughs> i was like for me I, was, i started checking out places where i can now go and learn it further uh-huh. uh, i enrolled a couple of uh, online uh, classes where i could learn color grading and then in the midst of checking 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 now because i was now becoming interested in color grading mm. uh, I started following the top color graders the guys who are working on uh, the uh, King Kong mm. everybody who's just doing good stuff mm. I started following them and then I realized they're having master classes once in a while they're having some master classes online these guys are always willing to give out information mm. funny thing and they'll even bring out that movie they'll bring out the King Kong be like this is how I did it I played the And I realized even if he tells you you're not going to steal that King Kong movie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> It's like yeah I did this and this yeah. And now try watch the cinema. You try watch try and get the client. <laughs> But they're always very open in sharing yes. their ideas. And I was like okay. Then I realized after doing a couple of projects and online 
realized it will work best so you I were do. talking to them in the master classes you go join them so now not not necessarily because some of them were just like a talk then okay they it's go one way. yes there's a lot of people commenting and yeah. all that so you, you just learn yes and you go uh, of course i'd learned my way around it i did a lot of practice and all that and i was like yeah it's getting somewhere but there's like a juice <laughs> that they're not oh, to your taste it's a juice <laughs> So I, I came to learn about uh, the master classes, online master classes uh, for, a, for a, a company called Color Training, mm. which uh, is led by a guy called a color scientist. He's a very, very well known color, color scientist. It's called Dado Valentic. Mm. So he's known, yeah, and he's like, uh, he's like the Lucas or <laughs> <laughs> Uko. Yeah. yeah, so he's even now creating softwares which are dealing with. Um, uh, artificial intelligence. Wow. Like I, I can put a shot there and let the machine decide decide for me. Give me a look for it, which I am a tester. I'm a better tester for it. For real? I'm called a factory driver. What? So uh, yes, let's talk about it later. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> so bro, this guy is called Dado Valentic. <laughs> I think I really posted him. I think even in my highlights on Instagram where I, I decided to enroll, but now for the physical one. Mm. Because at this time I was like, I need to make a trip to States. Mm -hmm. Let me go and do two things. I was going to do advanced cinematography mm -hmm. and also do uh, color training.